Okay, um, right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our monthly uh, neuro emergency SIG CME. And today we have our guest of honor, who is um, Dr. Wan Ashraf. And um, without further ado, I would like to um, invite Dr. Iskaima, who is a consultant emergency physician in uh, HP UPM, um, as our moderator today and to um, conduct the following session. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nina. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Okay, uh, first of all, okay, uh, thank you all for uh, joining the monthly uh, neuro emergency medicine CME. Okay, uh, today uh, we're going to have a talk about stroke. Okay, um, as we know, a stroke is one of the common presentation in emergency department. Usually, it is uh, for the emergency uh, physician or the emergency department doctor. It is quite easy to detect if they presented with a typical uh, symptoms and sign. For example, uh, one-sided weakness, slurring of speech, and also facial asymmetry. However, if they are presented uh, in a typical way, uh, then it can lead to a, a misdiagnosis or underdiagnosis. Uh, or also a delayed diagnosis. So we know about stroke mimic. I think a typical presentation is we call a stroke chameleon. Uh, so I believe uh, today uh, our speaker, Dr. Ashraf, uh, Dr. Wan Ashraf Wan Zaidi, will cover uh, about uh, the atypical presentation of stroke and how do we recognize uh, uh, some symptoms uh, that not typical of stroke and how we differentiate between other diagnosis and stroke. Uh, okay, so just a little bit introductions about Dr. Wan Ashraf Wan Zaidi. Okay, Dr. Wan Ashraf is a UKM lecturer, uh, also a, a stroke neurologist. So he specialized in uh, acute stroke care. Um, he's also the vice chairman of um, Malaysian Stroke Council. Um, he uh, with uh, involvement with emergency fraternity, I think he is uh, indirectly advising us okay, on uh, what uh, activities that is suitable for our neuro SIG. And recently, he gave a talk about stroke in our emergency, medic, uh, emergency medicine annual scientific meeting uh, in October. All right, so without further ado, I invite uh, Dr. Wan Ashraf Wan Zaidi to, to, to give his presentation today. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Uh, very good day, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Iskamar. Um, so basically, uh, my task today, this morning, is to uh, discuss about the topic atypical hyperacute stroke presentation. And as mentioned just now, so basically, uh, I will go through uh, called, uh, as mentioned before. Oops, why did not move? Okay, so you can see my slides, right? So there's uh, no disclosure for this presentation. Okay, I'll just make this one small. So objective of the presentation. So uh, as mentioned just now, so basically, stroke, yeah, majority of the time, you will have uh, called quite classic motor symptom or sensory symptoms or mixed motor sensory. So, but you have stroke mimics in between and you have this atypical stroke presentation. So my objective today is basically to share with you and to emphasize to you that it's important to have high clinical index of suspicion if clinically suspected stroke, because of stroke is emergency, brain attack. So it's emergency, we need your help to have high index of suspicion. Stroke diagnosis require clinical skills. So basically, this is from history of presenting illness. Very brief one, very fast one. So that will require a bit of skills and experience and then your examination uh, skill. So I just put here, not expensive in Ringgit Malaysia for the government, but the, the, there is a need maybe to uh, call, uh, invest in the expert uh, call, uh, in, uh, to, to develop more expertise uh, like uh, called the Nasrina and the group is trying to do uh, uh, and try to pursue and uh, call progress in the future. Um, but this, these skills are very valuable, valuable because of ultimately the, all this experience will then save life. Okay, that's our objective today. Hopefully, a bit of it. 
so introduction so the just to share uh, there is an updated definition of stroke for the 21st century this is from professor Sakwen group so uh, a statement of healthcare professional from the asia asa guideline 2013 so what is stroke so we just go back a bit so before we go to the atypical presentation Stroke is a sudden onset neurological deficit attributed by acute focal or called uh, can still be bilateral in, in the call in uh, very rare circumstances, very ill patient, okay, and, and central nervous system, whether this is a brain or spinal cord, and actually uh, it's also involving the uh, eye, the retina. So, and this is due to vascular cause. It must be because of vascular cause whether the vessels is being obstructed due to a thrombus, a symptomatic stenosis, so there is an occlusion, it's worsening over time, or there's blood vessel rupture. So whether this is because of aneurysmal rupture, and whether it's small as uh, called capillary level, Charcot Bouchard, or whether this is very aneurysm, or whether this is AV malformation or dura AVF. So this is all vascular causes. So all those uh, called pathological issues they can be called as true. Okay. You can stop me at any time. So because of I think it's better to be interactive and later on there will be also interactive. We'll look at the chat. So uh, I just want to introduce this uh, legend uh, on the right side. Uh, he found about crunch, he mentioned about crunch and ischemic attack. And this is something that we use until today. The foundation is from here. Trans ischemic attack majority uh, when this uh, called this particular uh, legend uh, called present about uh, trans ischemic attack it lasted less than fifteen minutes so by now we classify lasted less than one hour in majority and called uh, we know that because of also accessibility to its uh, called complete imaging then uh, we also put up a clinical diagnosis less than twenty four hours. Okay, it's a neurological deficit with no called it's a presentation of acute neurological deficit of vascular origin, but lasted less than one hour or maybe less than 24 hours. And there's no residual def neurological deficit after the 24 hours. And there's no signs of infarction via imaging. Can I just give a few seconds in the chat? Is, that, is this clear? Yeah, just in, so this is Professor Charles Miller Fisher. Somebody unmute. Uh, there, there is a question. Oops, okay. Let me look at chat. Oh, so clear. Okay, <laughs> so so basically, um, Professor Charles Miller Fisher. Uh, maybe you know. Uh, uh, he, you know, Miller Fisher syndrome is a variant of uh, called Guillain Barre syndrome. So he's also the founder of that. And also, he's also one of the first few neurologists who then also involved with all the other development of therapeutic uh, approach in stroke. Yeah, so very quite a lot of contribution. Okay, so three clinical questions when you approach a patient. So now we know that a stroke is a vascular abnormality. So obviously, number one, is it a process of vascular or a stroke-like mimic? So then stroke-like mimic means it's, it's not a stroke. Yeah, it's not vascular event. So, so basically a stroke mimic. Number two, where the CNS abnormality, so where's the lesion, where's the lesion or the, the, at the brain, for example, you can see on the left-hand side of here, you can see my cursor over here. So whether it's ACA, whether it's MCA, with this PCA, anterior cord artery, yeah. So yeah, then this is blood blood vessel supply, okay. And obviously, you want to know the mechanism. So in large, uh, called uh, called most of the time in the hyperacute setting, the most important one is about ischemic or hemorrhagic. But uh, as you entertain more cases, for example, yesterday, ischemic also there's a few subtypes. So whether it's thrombotic, whether it's stenotic, yeah. Uh, so, and whether it's combination. I yeah, hope we have time. There's interesting cases that I can show to you. So, reason because of we want to make a correct diagnosis. So, as a doctor, we want to make a correct diagnosis and it, we need 
to do it timely so immediately correctly because of if you until today time is brain is still relevant okay and the next one is to provide correct treatment so in uh, call as i'm talking to you from the emergency fraternity and also to my colleagues uh, from medical uh, and uh, if there is a gp over here so we don't want to discharge the patient and make a diagnosis net, not as a stroke not as a tia transient ischemic attack some ways it called a uh, uh, recent discussion and uh, called a few publication we, we also use uh, threatened uh, stroke because of when there is a there's a term of related still to a stroke when you say transient ischemic attack you're saying about okay this is just a warning stroke mm, it's not a stroke yet so it's just relax a bit which is wrong you don't want a stroke to happen because of you 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 basically have a patient with a brain infarct you allow a completed stroke meaning a larger stroke maybe in the future very soon and a significant number within 14 hours after the tia yeah so that's why maybe threatened stroke will be better uh, uh, depending on our culture Okay, and the next one will be avoiding complication, as I mentioned just now. So recurrent stroke, a completed stroke. So uh, stenotic patient, for example, I will show it on. You can still have a quite bad, moderate to severe stroke, even it can be associated with death. Okay, and the reason why we are today together and try to discuss about this is even with sophisticated imaging, a stroke might be missed. So we still need to understand what we are dealing with, the history, the examination, then we try to correlate with the imaging. So that's why I'm, I call, it's one of my pa passions basically to be with the clinician and try to, 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 to call the, the emergency physician, general physician, yeah? and even GPs to really understand how to diagnose a stroke. Okay, I think if too much talking and I just called uh, this one before we start, uh, I think that the child, maybe you again will be smiling i didn't put the mnemonic here but uh, this is something related to what he shared with me then i'll improvise over time so this is 70 years old hypertension and diabetes so that's history suddenly confused no apparent weakness okay so as i call that i mentioned just now during the call the introduction so majority of the time basically motor or sensory or motor sensory but this patient just a confusion okay the blood pressure is 150 over 90 with dextrostic of six okay the blood pressure is on the higher side um, yeah good to know that the sugar is still within the acceptable range the onset of the symptom that being detected is about six hours okay and the subtype of the group just to, to share uh, I think my registrar is here. So subtype is clear onset or wake up, for example. So this is clear onset, six hours. And severity, I can tell you if you just do NIHS, then maybe it's slow because of uh, there's no motor deficit. So and uh, call this is not MCA because of this is, as you can see, there's hypodensity at the PCA area. And you can use fast ED score again, and it will be low because of this. Maybe there's no large vessel occlusion or any other score like race score. And the most important is from the history and the examination, which includes in the severity assessment just now, what is the scan finding? So you can see over here, this patient had a cortical stroke at the PCA territory. Yeah? So and anyone want to, to, to share? What is the likelihood of this patient now? Uh, basically, uh, uh, yeah, GCS may be about 14 and a bit confused. After 24 hours, he recovered, but had a visual it's called uh, neurological symptoms. So basically, this is left-sided, so this right homonymous semianopia. Anyone try to guess what is the etiology of this, this uh, stroke? In the chat. Okay, five seconds lapse, maybe I just put that. So with this age, everything, with that cortical stroke, yeah, the sugar is controlled, so not thrombotic because of the sugar. 
and if you uh, have the luxury of the follow up blood sugar the lipid everything and obviously the next scan that i hope the uh, call majority of the center especially the tertiary secondary hospital is to to have a cta then you understand uh, there's no called uh, vasculopathy so maybe this is a cardioembolic stroke 70 years old hypertension for long so this is a atrial fibrillation stroke a scotical stroke yeah so but yeah called uh, um, yeah so, so again the af uh, called in yeah called it still can be a stenosis basically artery to artery uh, called emboli but uh, yeah the cta will be good to have okay so we are now going to the called uh, era of code stroke yeah right so in 2000 and uh, sorry in 1995 NIN studies it then and then changed totally the, the, the call the stroke treatment to be more therapeutic with the uh, approval of intravenous thrombolysis which is alteplase and maybe there will be a new one then place soon okay and hyperacute stroke them uh, basically where we entertain a, a call a hyperacute stroke uh, the term of activation is code stroke. Uh, some centers we have code stroke, stroke alert. Some centers we have different, different code stroke for the time of onset. So, but ultimately, you still need to understand stroke is emergency. That's the thing. Okay. So, as mentioned before, so you can have, you can be very lucky. It's obvious stroke. Clearly, not a stroke. Seems to have a stroke, but yeah, it's actually a stroke mimic. Then, stroke chameleon, which is a typical stroke plantation. So we are talking about this today. So reason for, for this, uh, I just like to, before we go to the symptoms, so just the analogy of non-STEMI and STEMI. So you look at the picture here. This is uh, called the uh, carotid bifurcation at the neck. Yeah. So uh, most likely this is the ICA because of GD is more uh, burdened with, with the uh, called ateroma from this uh, called pictogram here. So this is a stenotic vessels, yeah. So it's occluded, but there's no thrombus in between. So it's stenosis. So this picture of here to show this is a normal flow. This allow a normal lamina flow. Then there's arteroma. You can see there's disturbance of the flow. It can cause turbulence at the at the more proximal area. This is distal area because of this going to the brain, yeah. So this is from the heart. So turbulence then creates thrombus and cause artery to artery emboli. So thrombus from here, this is artery, right? So then go to the more distal artery. Or this area is so stenotic, it can cause hypoperfusion, meaning low blood flow. And this can be attributed because of, for example, blood loss, hypotension, dehydration. So those things can then call lead to a stroke okay so stroke is later on i will tell again heterogeneous and the last one so this one is partially occluding that's why the non-stemi it can be also there's active thrombus over here but it's partially occluding still allow you don't you don't get a very bad severe stroke then it will confuse you in terms of hearing representation but the last bit here you see there's a arteroma over here and maybe there's injury of the arteroma, platelet aggregation, thrombus formation, complete occlusion. That's it. You have a STEMI. Okay. And for the brain, you have a full blown, maybe territorial infarct. You then can uh, call uh, basically pinpoint the proper uh, stroke area. Okay. So uh, I think it's very important to know this. Uh, from this, we will then maybe in the next lecture, we show what are the complications. So um issues is as i mentioned here in the picture also collaterals so not all stroke have a good collaterals some stroke will have a bad collaterals vascular distribution we are not born the same some will have a good circle of willis some will have no connection between anterior to posterior some don't have right to left a call connection early stroke as i mentioned here there may be early is still called uh, there's still a flow not yet called uh the the thrombus propagation is not bad yet and it didn't completely occlude it. So a small stroke, you'll be, you'll be confused. Young patient, obviously, a call if you uh, a call joined the uh, National Stroke Round recently. So younger patients different. So they, they are a bit different. They have better collaterals. 
their brain is a bit more called uh, solid and called uh, able to to call uh, to go through the to, to the hypoxic uh, stress a bit longer. And obviously, postural circulation and anterior circulation are different. Postural circulation is a bit more challenging. And this one, Dr. Nasrina already presented before. But we will venture again, I think a bit, yeah, uh, bit by bit also because of lots of clinical syndromes from postural circulation and even anterior circulation. Okay, not moving. Okay, so just a bit, I don't want to, to show too much of the, the high five things, uh, which is not widely available even in UKM. Heterogeneous presentation of stroke, uh, just to show to here, just to trigger a bit of reading. So in this uh, called uh, paper, diffuse two clinical uh, trial, so they they managed to uh, analyze a uh, called uh, CT perfusion, and they then found out then uh, MR perfusion also. So basically, um, they they found this uh, called maybe there's a slow progressive stroke. Not maybe there is slow progressive stroke. So you can see the occlusion may be the same MCA, yeah, proximal MCA, but the stroke is only small like this. Okay, but there's a patient which come early. Yeah. MCA still, but the stroke, okay, upon assessment is already quite big. They are called as fast progressor, okay? So stroke are heterogeneous, so they are not the same. So we need, we need to understand and try to learn and improvise our knowledge slowly and we, 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 we can do it together, I think, yeah. So going to my topic, and I think it will become more interesting and become more called interactive, I hope. So a typical stroke presentation, first, number one, non-localizing symptoms. They can come with confusion, uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms. It's not common, uh, but they can come. And uh, with this, acute confessional state and altered level of consciousness, drop in GCS, for example. So anyone want to try to put in the chat, uh, what do you think? For example, we go to the picture first. While you put it in the chat, I just tell you, this is basically, I think, a yeah, middle-aged gentleman, uh, as middle-aged lady. So actually presented already to the to the nearby call, uh, uh, called called uh, hospital nearby to, to our center. But um, he was complaining, yeah, uh, very very subtle memory uh, disturbance, intermittently, uh, yeah, left-sided body numbness, uh, not much of weakness. Uh, it happened intermittently again. Uh, went to meet a doctor, and yeah, doctor says, yeah, maybe yeah, uh, yeah, this is just all age. No scan was done. Anything in the chat? Not yet. How many minutes already in the presentation? Sorry, can somebody put. Uh, middle age. I think this is about 60, 70. Uh, 70, I think this one. Sorry. So this is more than the middle age. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, called MRS by right is about the called uh, functional status is quite good. Uh, she's she's uh, called almost ADL. Um, called don't be called influenced much with the CT perfusion. Yeah, you'll be influenced because CT perfusion is there. <laughs> okay. Temporal loop. So this patient basically, yeah, so neuropsychiatry can be uh, dementia-like symptoms. They can also uh, be called gelastic, so they are keep on laughing, so that they can be part of the temporal lobe or they call the, uh, even the caudate nucleus. Uh, so, and um, yeah, later we will see also other things can happen with the basic angular involvement. Um, confessional state, this can be a, a call, uh, and the, second, the third one, altered consciousness, it can be because of uh, postural circulation, but even in anterior large stroke, it can cause uh, called uh, potentially large stroke. For example, it can cause a uh, drop in GCS. Okay, so basically, because of the picture over here on the right side, and you already know over here, <laughs> because I put the, the evidence paper here. Basically, this is Nasket, uh, published in nineteen ninety one, and this is a very old paper, but yeah, uh, called. Uh, yeah, amazingly, we don't have much of access uh, of CA and tractomy in Malaysia, uh, from my knowledge before. So basically, this patient presented to us uh, uh, called uh, with acute stroke symptoms, 
um, where the patient become confused, very difficult to assess the patient. Uh, not uh, if you really really spend time a bit longer because of when when you come with when the patient come with atypical presentation, that's one of the typical uh, called complication where you need time to 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 assess the patient. There is a subtle uh, called uh, weakness on the left hand side, and the patient really looks confused. And uh, despite this is non dominant brain, the patient may not be able to talk as usual. GCS keep on fluctuates. So, but if you spend time a bit longer, look at the, the left sided bo uh, body, especially the hand is not moving much because of uh, the, if you can see from the perfusion imaging over here, it affects more of the, uh, the MCA territory. Yeah. So, and you, as a call, I think Sugan also put here a bit of frontal loop and also a bit of a call, a uh, temporal loop just now. So, okay. So, uh, the, but when you do a CTA, the vessels imaging, you see, you see my cousin over here, right? So the left-hand side over here, this is a proximal ICA, is 90% stenosis. And in, actually, when, when the first run, it's actually, there's, no, there's no blood flow. With a DSA, so a, a proper angiogram, there's no blood flow. This is after one pass, then there is yeah very thin out uh, called proximal ICA. And on the right-hand side, is basically because of, you keep on occlud, uh, occluding, uh, and yeah, obviously we know the symptom is correlating. So then we then did a PLASTI called our IR in uh, HUKM. And then we then called, uh, put a stand because of, we know you will recoil because you're quite bad. Yeah. So this is a emergency stenting in a patient with acute stroke presented with this called subtype of atypical presentation. Okay, so I'll just push on because of time also. Okay, so let's discuss this one. I think, yeah, Tunashrina also may have also showed this before. This is plain CT, non-contrasted. What, what we call this? Give five to 10 seconds for this. The arrow is already there. Uh, uh, MCA then sign. This is uh, at the, in front of the ponds, yeah going to the midbrain already so this is already midbrain going to the midbrain yeah it's a bit angulated like that so okay that's why you can see the pca too okay so this is a dense basal artery sign and this patient yeah i'll, I'll show to you uh, basically the patient came with gcs4 and you see basically the green one, maybe there's fragmentation. This uh, call, how you determine this is basically you can, you can just immediately go to the panel of the CT scan, try to get the density of the call, uh, this uh, dense vessel sign. If it's uh, more than 45, it's uh, suspicion. And the call is more than 60, intraluminal, it is uh, called uh, most likely uh, thrombosis. And the easiest is basically ob obviously gold standard, you do a CTA and you correlate. This is where the clot is. But when you do a CTA single phase, you might overestimate the call the, the flow arrest. So then you can discuss with your RR, this is a clot, you just need to fish it out and all you can thrombolize if the patient within time. So the next one, I'm still within the first topic just now. So this is actually two patients. On the left hand side, the patient come confused. On the right side, the patient also come confused. The clinical diagnosis, uh, yeah, both I was involved. The clinical diagnosis for both is basically potentially looking at the scan. This is receptive dysphagia. Okay, because of time, so you can see right the temporal lobe over here. Okay, just just to call. To, to show to you, like the first few presentations just now, sometimes yeah, you need to really see because of this patient actually presented also with slightly high sugar, about eight on the left hand side, yeah, and uh, eight to 13, something like that. So it fluctuates. But this patient actually, when you examine, you really call, take all the history, two days history of fever, two days history of fever, and also sudden onset confusion, sudden onset again, yeah, sudden onset neurological deficit. And this is a call more of the speech. 
So basically, uh, call uh, just now you had the CT scan only. You see the left temporal lobe is hypodensity. Maybe it's a stroke, but you need you to know stroke also can be lots of uh, heterogeneous call or multi multiple uh, uh, reasons for that or cause. It can be infective endocarditis. It can be vasculitis, and in this patient is basically maybe vasculitis and cephalitis. Okay, on the left side, you can see the MRI then shows multiple other territory, which is not according to the usual arterial territory. On the left hand side, ah, oh, this one is a stroke because of this is a proximal MCA. But this this patient only had the symptoms on the temporal lobe, no no apparent weakness during that time. So the patient presented early. You can see this is normal MCA and there's a stump over there. Right? Something in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, Nalini. So for possible uh, HSV and cephalitis. Yeah, obviously, the, that's the common common one. So basically, we commence immediately the call acyclovir for the patient on the left and also look for the call uh, other potential diagnosis. This patient's a bit elderly also. It can be also paraneoplastic, so limbic encephalitis. And this is easily that you know this is a stroke, but yeah, it's not easy also because of whether the patient come early, then you can thrombolize. If not, then thrombectomy or combination. So the second atypical presentation subgroup is abnormal movement or seizure. Okay, so stroke usually loss of movement or we call as negative uh, call, uh, symptoms. Negative symptoms. So you lost the function. So loss. Uh, unab uh, unable to move, loss of sensation. Rarely become positive like pain, headache, seizure. Here, uh, the one that we mentioned over here is abnormal movement, hyperkinetic, hypokinetics like uh, Parkinsonism, seizure, okay, at the onset. Because we are talking just about uh, hyperacute today, there's also subacute presentation. Uh, then there's lots of factors that influence this. For example, concurrent uncontrolled diabetes, they love to have called hyperkinetic uh, called uh, presentation, yeah, chorea, hemibalismus, yeah. Something in the chat. Yeah, correct. Actually. Okay. So for example, uh, because I, I mentioned before, stroke is not just ischemic stroke, there's also hemorrhagic stroke. So you can have this patient, for example, come with just confessional state um, initially. And subsequently, as the hemorrhage, intracerebral hemorrhage, uh, called uh, expand, this patient uh, called having weakness on the right side of the body, more to the arm initially, then go to the right uh, lower limb. Okay, so this patient is confused, and then subsequently had a seizure. So yeah, called uh, majority of the IC uh, called. If you have a seizure, you need to rule out uh, ICH more compared to a uh, occlusive or ischemic stroke. But sometimes ischemic stroke can be also presented with a seizure or abnormal movement. And as you can see over here, anyone want to shout or to put up? This is a, the abnormal scan, the one with the circle. Uh, what is the abnormality first? And this, uh, this is the norm, normal scan on the right-hand side. I'll stop sharing for a while because I think this one will be need to show. Yeah, oops. Anyone want to shout for the right side? Okay, uh, meanwhile, so we go to this. Oops, not this one. So basically, uh, for the right side, you can see there's no ICA. This is this MRI TOF. There's a problem with MRI uh, called because of if you don't give a contrast. So uh, you see immediately like that, and you can not see the distal. You need to see the source image. Um, uh, yeah. So basically, you see there's no MCA on the on the one on the left. This is normal one. So no proper MCA bilaterally. The distal ICA uh, terminate. And then thumb over there, tapering over there. And this is an Asia, maybe young patient. Usually they, they, they basically come a bit younger. 
you survive the childhood symptoms. So this is Moya Moya disease. Sorry, I'm not sharing anymore. Yeah? So I'll just share the video. This you cannot see. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, this one. I go to the this YouTube first to show to you. Can you see the YouTube? Can right? Yeah, yeah. we can. Okay, so basically, uh, almost similar. Sometimes this can happen when the vessels decompensate. We underwent STAMCA bypass. This patient had the STAMCA bypass. Bypass. Limb shaking. Transit TIS. We can see he's quietly sitting. So this this guy. He is occluding his STAMCA yes. bypass site, and twenty seconds. You later, see the hand. He developed these limb shaking movements. Okay, so after a few seconds of releasing oops. the occlusion, the symptoms improved. So, sorry. Then just close that one. Okay, so basically going back to the presentation. So, um, yeah, so in a uh, called uh, occlusive disease, stenotic, uh, stenotic disease, sometimes they can come with a bit of uh, abnormality. So sometimes it's very difficult. It's quite not common to have uh, called a uh, uh, young stroke with moya moya. But uh, yeah, it will come to your immediate department, I'm, I'm sure, especially uh, called uh, some of you coming from tertiary and secondary hospital. Okay. So uh, just now you saw the left hand side as ICH patient come with a seizure and a call, uh, you, uh, now uh, one of the presentation that you also can have in acute stroke is basically headache. As I mentioned before, negative symptom is uh, much more common. Headache is positive symptom. So you need to be worried about ICH. In this patient in particular, there's no ICH, but there is a bit of suspicion parasagittal uh, swelling and this is just to show to you, there's another subtype of what we call as venous stroke, so cortical vein thrombosis, and there's a thrombus inside the superior sagittal sinus, and this is what we call uh, as empty delta sign. So there's a feeling defect over there, there's a contrast at the superior uh, uh, called sagittal sinus. Okay, so if you have headache with neurological deficit, fulfill the acute neurological deficit, and called uh, this patient may come with headache. This patient may come at the atypical presentation of seizure. So please make sure that, especially in the high-risk patient, for example, obesity, OCPs, uh, called female, or yeah. So basically, uh, you need to then uh, uh, have high index of suspicion of cerebral venous thrombosis. It's also a stroke. Okay. I think in the chat, no, okay. So, and the patient can also come with peripheral nervous, uh, nervous symptoms, nervous system symptoms. So for example, we learned before about postural circulation, they can have vertigo, ataxia, just isolated, very difficult for you to really determine is a stroke or not, okay? Cranial nerve palsies, we have discussed, I think, before, but we will learn again. Uh, hopefully, Atrasina uh, will share, I think, the uh, localization of neuroanatomy we discuss, hopefully. And um, I just want to show a bit of acute monoparesis. So it looks like a, called a wrist drop, okay? Or we call it as cortical hand, uh, cortical, uh, uh, hand uh, syndrome, yeah? Or it can be a cortical foot syndrome or isolated sensory uh, symptoms. So why this is happening? Because of, you know, they're called the cerebral homunculus, everything. So here, yeah. What do you think? Anyone? Especially I know Sugan is here. So Sugan, you give the call maybe 10 seconds before you answer. What area here infected? The MLT you can see from the DWI. This is the DWI. And this is the, the call flare. ICA. This is brain, uh, so again, please come back to neurology, so again.
Then I stress again. Okay. Anyone? Don't worry, I will show to you afterwards. Yeah. So um, yeah, I basically call the infarct as called in the WI over there. Uh, I just want to go to the normal side over there. You can see the normal side. So this part here is the correlating omega. So we call this omega. Okay. So the omega is basically the hand cortex. The hand cortex. So the one at the back over here is this. Uh, sorry, this this one over here. Then you can just yeah. So the sulcus over here we call a central sulcus. The green one over here is basically the primary motor cortex. Then you have the premotor cortex in front. Okay, and this is uh, the primary somatosensory area. Your sensory called uh, uh, fibers over there. The, the the cortex is here. So if there is a lesion at the primary motor cortex, obviously loss. Your, in a, your, you will be unable to, to, to function as usual. But the unusual, the atypical part of it, most of the time you have hemiparesis, right? Or you have the whole arm is actually weak. But this one has just had something like a peripheral neuropathy, right? So then, yeah, so then you'll be a bit difficult for you. You need to look at uh, the whole picture again. Uh, sometimes uh, you may need also to, 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 to really call, discuss and see whether it's worthwhile to, yeah, and, but obviously MRI will be nicer in this case. Okay, so this is the motor cortex, this is sensory cortex, this central sulcus. Other things that you also can learn from here is basically this is frontal lobe. Anything behind the central sulcus is a parietal lobe from this slice. Hi. You get the omega, you get the central sulcus, motor cortex and the sensory cortex, frontal lobe and parietal lobe. Any question? You just push on. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Okay, so what do you think the clinical presentation of this? <laughs> Within the same topic, yeah, so I just divided just now, right? So this is peripheral symptoms. Yeah, so basically this in thalamus, so I think majority will be able to, to, to know. So yeah, majority will say this left hemisphere sensory loss, but sometimes this patient only have like a numbness of the hand kind of thing. It's acute in onset and there's no neck pain, nothing. Yeah, and yeah, you need to, to be suspicious this is a stroke. Yeah, okay. And obviously if you have a neurology, neurology colleague or neurology service, you can also do an NCS if you want, but that would be called unnecessary if you already make a diagnosis of a stroke. Okay, yes, sensory loss. And it can be also, again, just the hand, depending on the distribution of the fibers. Okay, so the fifth group is basically, I think this is the last group, and then we will have a very interesting video, hopefully, the one I choose. So atypical symptoms. So you can have isolated dysarthria. I'll share the publication later on. So basically, this can be the genu of the the called the uh, internal capsule. Yeah. So uh, and you can look at the most commonly very bad one if in the dominant side. It can be also in the brainstem. Yeah. So especially the isolated dysarthria, facial paralysis syndrome. Okay. Isolated visual symptoms. So and it can be also transient, then become the non-consensus TIA, so very difficult for you to diagnose this. So basically, best, that's why we, uh, this year called, if you notice, the World Stroke Day is basically about stroke awareness, sim stroke symptom awareness, and uh, called uh, I and team in Malaysia Stroke Council basically really, really fight for BFAS. We actually uh, bring it to World Stroke Organization and say that, look, Malaysia want to, mush, uh, to, to push forward, push forward. But, push forward so that we're going to be a bit more called aware. We are not going to just do fast because we want to know about balance and uh, called eyesight, yeah, to and the patient will come early. Anton syndrome, very, very interesting, cortical blindness, but the patient deny of having that deficit. So they have the hallucination of the background. They're still seeing you, but in fact, they are blind. Okay, balance syndrome. So, and this is bilateral occipital parietal uh, called stroke, yeah. You have a call uh, the visual ataxia, apraxia, 
and isolated uh, uh, visual field disturbance, as mentioned just now. Okay, and foreign essence syndrome. Uh, this one can because of uh, your frontal lobe is involved, and uh, but you have a bit of accent, but uh, call speaking in your own language, you still be able to talk. Isolated dysphagia or stridor again brainstem involvement. So let's discuss on this. I think uh, Dr. Nasrina already showed me be the last few uh, called uh, called. Uh, present the call in the brain stem, right? Was recirculation before? Anyone? This one is a different patient, and this one is a different patient. Yeah, obviously because we can see the distribution. So this is on the uh, left side, mandala. So I just have you this post recirculation. Okay, this is mandala. So this is mandala. So this is midline. This is lateral. There is. This, this DWI shows lateral medullary syndrome. Okay, so lateral medullary, lateral medullary stroke in this case because of this is DWI. Lateral medullary syndrome have we call the list of official list of uh, called clinical symptomology. So basically, sometimes you don't get the full blown um, called uh, symptom. So you can get a call basically no weakness. You can have a call hemisensory loss on the face with lateral to stroke then the hemisensory loss on the right side uh, of the body. Then you have a bit of Horner syndrome. You have cerebellar sign, ipsilateral to the stroke, you know, okay, because of the sympathetic fibers and uh, uh, called maybe a bit of uh, uh, dysphagia, dysarthria, okay, for, for the la lateral medical syndrome, but usually not, not as bad. Anyone want to uh, tell me what artery supply this? Based on the three questions now, can vascular disturbance, which vascular vessels supply this? Because of when I was in training, so I was saying that, okay, hmm, my car, most of the time they will recover. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the international is not fair. You already called expert. And so again, congratulations is correct. As the national mentioned there, it's a pica. So posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Uh, so uh, called the one I mentioned just now. You need to know the, the, the status of the vessel. So the vessels is completely bad, the stenotic. And then somebody called, okay, I postulate this is because of hypertension, for example, right? And bring down the BP, then good luck. The whole cerebellum stroke out because of posterior inferior cerebral artery, right? It's not only for the lateral medulla. It, it also supply the inferior cerebellum. And you see the pica territory is quite big. And if the, the whole cerebellum stroke out, what will happen? you need a posterior decom, right? So that's why, again, if you can talk to your radiology clinic, that's why vascular imaging is very important, okay? And the middle part over here, okay, you see the, uh, called the right side of the mandala is having, this is the, called, this is the T2, and this is the DWI. So this is middle, so medial, medullary infarct because of the, the call, at least you can see. Usually the medulla because of uh, the call, the networks, uh, there is collaterals, but usually uh, you, will, you will see immediately the flare involvement or the T2 involvement. You don't get the DWI flare mismatch as much unless you are very fast. I never encounter anyone with, with the discrepancy or mismatch for this. So medial medullary syndrome, anyone want to shout what is the potential outcome? There's already a call, uh, clue over here, right? So you can see, so uh, the anterior part of the, the mandala is called as pyramids, okay? Not Sunway pyramid. So that is your pyramids that containing your corticospinal tract. So you can then know then you can map out from here. So there's already called crossover to the next lecture about neuroanatomy, where neurofunctional anatomy. So you can have left-sided body weakness because of you know this is above the called the the called the decussation. So um, this upper part of the mandala, and then uh, the, the uh, call the patient have left-sided body weakness, and uh, called you can see that there is also the hypoglossal nucleus in the in uh, in the middle. 
Okay, so that's the reason why the patient will also have a called uh, a tongue deviation, tongue weakness. So they choke because of they're unable to swallow their own saliva, very clumsy. Okay, you can see there's maybe also ipsilateral trigeminal uh, called uh, 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 called uh, nuclei uh, trigeminal called cranial nerve five weakness, and uh, because of the involvement of the medulla. So medial malaria syndrome often become more severe and usually associated with poor outcome. And this is being supplied by the, let's see, maybe if you can answer, then Dr. Nasrina will blend your coffee. Okay, so because of time, thank you, Tej. So basically, this is anterior spinal artery. Okay, so basically uh, also a branch from the vertebral artery. So you want to know the, the, called, uh, the status of your vertebral artery. Usually this is often associated with atherosclerotic. Okay, you can look into this paper, very nice one, 2011, sorry, I thought it's 2014. A typical presentation of acute cerebral vascular syndrome. It's, um, it's good actually, but you need to read it slowly and understand everything. Uh, just try to, to make sure that you understand the group and yeah, and to, to really trigger high index of suspicion about stroke. So um, yeah, if we have time, I will show this patient and another patient, which is actually already shown. Okay, uh, please proceed, uh, Dr. Ashraf. We'll proceed, okay. <laughs> so uh, no, no other question, uh, burning question. Okay, two, we'll call five seconds. Uh, okay, Nan, uh, can we stop the recording because of there's a patient here, yeah. Sharing. Okay, so uh, sorry, uh, just to explain the last.